Hello, and welcome to Battletech Faction Briefings. This time we are looking at another mercenary unit that decided to join up with the Word of Blake. They do begin with a noble cause, but it takes centuries to finally achieve their goal. They are a smaller unit that most mech commanders might ignore, but their history is deeper than one might expect. Today, we are looking at the Heezen Hotheads. They have a striking symbol. It is a black skull with flames on it. It not only works for the name of the unit, it also works well with their paint scheme. Their paint scheme is flat black, with a wreath of flames around the cockpit. It is a very intimidating design that really makes the unit stand out, both on the tabletop and in the battlefield. There is one novella that has an appearance by the Heezen Hotheads. Beyond that, everything is told in source books. If you want to skip spoilers, then go to the time listed. During the Amiris Civil War, Heezen was hit hard during the Hegemony Campaign. They were able to rebuild somewhat, but when the Star League fell, the successor states had a mad rush to capture Hegemony worlds. The Capellan Confederation annexed Heezen in 2781. As part of their takeover, they exiled the royal house of the world, House Tuhi. Duke Roderick Tui left with members of the Heezen Planetary Guards. Exiled from their homeworld, they formed a mercenary unit in 2788. They formed a regiment-sized unit with the long-term goal of taking back their homeworld. They would call themselves the Heezen Hotheads. There is little known about the early contracts they took, but it is likely they joined up with anyone who wanted to fight the Capellan Confederation. That being said, it does seem likely that the newly dubbed He's and Hotheads were part of the Federated Sun's counter-offensive to the Draconis Combine due to them being stationed on Talmaj in 2821. However, they were an underpowered medium-weight unit ranging between one-third and two-thirds strength by that time. So they probably functioned more like a garrison force rather than as an assault force during the Second Succession War, they were still working for the Federated Sons. They were battling in the Draconis March region and remained stationed on Talamaj as of 2830, where they guarded it from potential Draconis Combine attacks. They remained with the Federated Sons, and when Bennett was taken from the Draconis Combine in 2857, the Hotheads were moved to garrison it. They held off an attack by the Draconis Combine that same year. They were still on world by the end of the war in 2864. By the early 3000s, the Hotheads took up a contract with the Lyran Commonwealth. During the years after the Second Succession War, the Hotheads developed planetary assault tactics and got back to full regimental strength. By 3012, they raided the Merrick world of Lungana. This was one of the early attempts at their best-known strategy. They moved in and fought the Merrick soldiers before doing a drop operation, but the dropped units landed in a minefield. Thus, they sent a team of four Karnov UR transports to rescue the stranded Light Mech Company. The rescue was a success, but by the end of the operation, they had lost all their Karnov transports. And while they did get away with quite a bit of salvage, the operation at best was a Pyrrhic victory. Still, it was a good way for them to test out their new tactics, which would pay off in the future. In 3019, Wolf's Dragoons attacked Hesperus II, one of the most important Lyran industrial worlds. The LCAF intelligence learned about the attack from a spy and rushed a team of warriors to put down the Dragoon threat. The Heeson Hotheads teamed up with the 3rd Royal Guards, 24th Lyran Guards, and Hansen's Rough Riders to support the Hesperus Garrison forces, which included the 15th Lyran Guards and the 6th Lyran Guards. This would be the 13th Battle of Hesperus II. The Lyran forces struggled, but eventually drove away the Wolf's Dragoons. The Hotheads performed hit-and-run attacks while the Dragoons were dealing with heavier Lyran forces. The maneuvers were part of a bigger strategy of wearing down the Dragoons. After the battle, the Hotheads remained working for the Lyran Commonwealth. By 3025, they were posted on New Kyoto as a garrison force after Snord's Irregulars moved on to a new world. While stationed on New Kyoto, the Hotheads got a new dropship, Flaming Skull, 
which became their new command ship. By 3029, the Free Worlds League planned an attack against the Tikhonov Free Republic. Thus, the hotheads were called in to prevent the attack. Edward Regis, the Lyran General of the Armies, brought them in on an operation to attack Kallison. The mission was to disrupt the forces stationed there. The hotheads had to deal with land air mechs as they made their approach, but the hotheads pushed forward and caused the Merrick guards to flee the world. The hotheads kept supplies, and the Lyrans kept the world. After their victory, the Heezen hotheads continued their contract with the Federated Commonwealth and were posted on Shionoha to protect it from potential Draconis Combine attacks. Prior to the War of 39, the Heezen hotheads were transferred to Thorin to potentially join an assault on the Draconis Combine. However, they went to New Earth as a defense team to hold off DCMS counterattacks. The Hotheads would return to Shio Noha prior to the clan invasion, and would see no action during the war. However, as the years had passed, the staff of the Hotheads got into arguments with the Fedcom Liaison Office, and chose not to renew their contract in 3053. At that time, the Word of Blake offered them a job, not as mercenaries, but as teachers. They would be sent to a Word of Blake training facility in the periphery. They would train Blakist soldiers in planetary assault tactics. While they were away, the world of Heezen would gain independence from the Federated Commonwealth in the aftermath of Operation Guerrero in 3057. This led to an ongoing civil war between factions that wanted to return to the Capellans and those who wanted to remain independent. By 3061, the Heezen Hotheads would find themselves transferred to Gibson to continue the training of the Blake forces. They were offered a job by a governmental faction of Heezen, which brought them to their homeworld for the first time in centuries. The Hotheads were tasked with the defense of the HPG from potential threats in 3064. They were teamed up with a level 3 unit from the Word of Blake 4th Division. The arrival of the Word of Blake led to some of the factions uniting against the new foe. Baron Luis Montong was trying to take control of the world and hired the always faithful mercenaries to join his forces. At the same time, Gale's Grinders, the Capellan Garrison Force, kept their heads down as the faction powers shifted. It wasn't long before the Hotheads and the Blakists battled local forces and the always faithful mercenaries. Once the Hotheads had a good position with the people, Bren Tui started a campaign to take control of his homeworld. The Hotheads faced off with Gale's Grinders in 3067. The 2nd Battalion Recon Lance tracked down and dealt major damage to the Grinders, who weren't well trained. The other defenders of Heezen were destroyed by the combination of the Hotheads and the Blakists. It is not known what happened to Gale's Grinders, but their unit was shattered. The Always Faithful were wiped out in 3068. By 3069, the Hotheads had gained control of Heezen and decided to join the Word of Blake Protectorate. With threats to their control eliminated, the Hotheads helped train members of the Protectorate Militia. The Hotheads remained the primary military force of Heezen for years. However, Stone's Coalition attacked Heezen in 3078. The Heezen Hotheads worked with the Heezen Protectorate Militia to battle against the 12th Atreian Dragoons, 7th Donegal Guards, Devil's Brigade, and 12th Mechanized Cavalry Cluster of Clan Hell's Forces. As the fighting continued, the Capellan forces arrived with the 4th McCarran's Armored Cavalry and 4th Tau Seti Rangers, who made this a three-sided war. Eventually, the CCAF joined up with Stone's Coalition to battle the Heezen pro-Blake forces. The Capellans refused to accept the surrender of the Heezen Hotheads, and thus the mercenary force was destroyed. After that, the Capellans battled with the Coalition forces again, and were driven off. Shortly after their victory, Heezen would be brought into the Republic of the Sphere. The Hotheads never rebuilt, and the majority of the regiment was wiped out during the fighting. While not the most exciting unit, the Heezen Hotheads were involved in several major battles, and remained at regimental strength for the majority of their existence. While they have major gaps in their history, they did fight well in most of their noted battles. 
Their destruction was just another step in the warpath of Stone's coalition. They will not be back, and all those they trained are wiped out as well. Their legacy has become nothing more than dust in the wind. Even though the Heezen Hotheads have a long history, they do not have many notable pilots. Naeus Fitzgerald the commander, during the pre-Clan War period, who made the choice to start working with the Word of Blake in 53. His mech is unknown. Argo Hambleton, the lead scout of the 2nd Battalion Recon Team. He led the team that overran Yale's Grinders when taking Heason. He was a mid-pilot, but a good teacher. He piloted a spider. Bren Tui, he took over as the commander in the Civil War era, he led the Hotheads in the campaign to take back his family's homeworld of Heezen. It is likely he died in 3078. His personal mech is not listed. The Heezen Hotheads are historically a medium weight unit. They primarily use medium mechs, but they also have a handful of light scout mechs and heavy fast mechs. They preferred using a mix of high speed and good firepower. The standard strategy of the unit is to use two battalions to get an enemy's attention before a third battalion does a drop on the enemy position to trap and destroy them. They got quite a bit of tech from the Word of Blake, including advanced technical support and advanced mechs. The Hotheads also have enough jump and drop ships for the entire unit. In addition to their mechs, they have infantry, VTOLs, but do not seem to have standard armor support. The He's and Hotheads have only one major story appearance in Hector, which discusses the 13th Battle of Hesperus. Beyond that, there is a good amount of source book entries that explore the history of Heezen, as well as the story of the Hotheads. It should be noted that there are a few source books that only have information about deployment location and current regimental size. Once again, this is a unit I decided to cover because I saw their name in one of my source books. I just thought the name was interesting, and once I saw the flaming skull symbol, I decided to add them to the list. While some units I stumble across, like this one, get discarded due to a lack of information, the Hotheads made the cut. There isn't much exciting about the unit overall. While I do think the flat black paint scheme is cool, I don't think there's much of a reason to paint them up. As their battle record is so slim, they don't have much value on the tabletop outside of what-if scenarios. That being said, I kind of like the unit and their path to supporting the Word of Blake, as well as their quest to recover their homeworld. Again, I am discussing a unit that shouldn't have a force pack, but I do think a Word of Blake mercenary force pack might be interesting. If Catalyst ever makes one, here are my suggestions, alongside character cards for Naeus Fitzgerald, Fargo Hamblin, and Bren Tui. Next time, I will be going into the Secret Summer Project so I won't be covering other mercenary or house units for a while. I hope you will enjoy the series, and expect smaller faction videos later this year. The final hint for this project is that they are one of the original Battle Droids era mercenary factions. Thank you for watching, and a big thank you to all those mech warriors who have subscribed. May your weapons stay hot and your reactors stay cool. Look forward to the next episode, and remember, I'll see you at the tavern.